This video will explain the mechanisms by which a 1 hectare farm can reliably feed 10 people year-round. For viewers who are not familiar with the hectare size, 1 hectare is 10,000 square meters or approximately 2.5 acres. The farm will have three zones. The first will be the forested area around the homestead. This will take up 0.3 hectares but will also include an extra 0.1 hectare of vegetable garden. The second will be what we will call the field. This will be farmed intensively and will be 0.6 hectares. It will be the heart of the food production system. The third will be the outer fence. This will not really take up space, since it will only be a fence, but it can be used to train climbing vines on it for grape production, for direct eating or making wine, raisins or grape syrup. This farm design will aim at a farm that is as economical and quick to set up as possible. Really simple stuff. The Homestead Zone Let's start by examining the forested homestead zone. Here we will simply plant productive trees, mainly fruit and nut trees, around the house. This area will be fenced to be separated from the field zone and inside it, separately, we will fence the 0.1 hectare or one fourth of an acre vegetable garden. Twelve ducks will freely roam there, ten females and two males, and you will need to also have a cheap small plastic pool for kids filled with water for their bathing needs. This type of pool is the one you fill with sand for the kids to play there. It should cost around 10 euros or dollars. Apart from the 12 ducks, you should also have 11 chickens, 10 females and 1 male, to keep company to the ducks. Your coop should be a combined coop, since chickens like sleeping on roosting poles and ducks on the ground. So you should have a roosting pole for the chickens Another area in there, not directly beneath the roosting pole, to avoid ducks full of chicken droppings, for the ducks to sleep, and a couple of nest boxes for the chickens, preferably roll-out nest boxes, which give you clean eggs and the chickens can't peck at them. Ducks don't need nesting boxes, they just lay them anywhere. The benefit of this system is that the trees will provide you with chestnuts, hazelnuts, almonds and all sorts of fruit to supplement your nutrition with, as well as a microclimate around the house, creating shade in the summer and wind protection in the winter. To maximize these effects, plant tall trees, such as chestnut trees, right to the south of the house and create a zone of thick trees of all sizes, tightly knit, in the northern side of the house. Make sure the trees to the south of your house are deciduous, to allow the sun to reach during the winter, and make sure that if you have any evergreen tree, it is to the north of the house, where it will block no sunlight from reaching the house, and will also protect better against winds, having leaves even in the winter. The ducks and chickens will be producing more than 10 fertilized eggs a day, which can be either consumed or hatched for new chicks, which can either be used for egg production, females, or meat production, males. The vegetable garden will constantly be full, fertilized every season by composted manure from the coop, and so will constantly remain at 100% efficiency, supplementing the basic nutrition of the family year-round. You should also have a few beehives, depending on how many your land and the neighboring lands can support. This will definitely cover all your honey needs, unless you're in the habit of making and drinking copious amounts of mead, which will certainly test your honey production capabilities. You should also be using the intestines of slaughtered animals for producing black soldier fly larvae for supplemental feed for poultry and pigs. 
You should also have three rabbits, two females and one male, in cages for meat. They can be fed hay, leaves from the Judas tree or other legumes, kale or pretty much anything green. They will provide you with a hundred rabbits a year for eating. The field zone. The field will be 0.6 hectares and will surround the homestead zone. It will be divided in 12 small paddocks of 0.05 hectares each, which means 500 square meters or one eighth of an acre. This is where a rotational grazing will happen year round, as well as the main food production. The idea is to stack four crops in a single year here, starting with barley in the very early beginning of the growing season, followed by corn as a summer crop, then by turnips, which grow very fast, and then by kale to last all the way through the winter until the next barley sowing. The dates for this will greatly vary depending on where you live, but to make the kale easier to establish once the ground gets cold, you should start seedlings and transplant the young plants when you harvest the turnips. In two of the 12 paddocks there will be pastured animals. In the first one there will be two feeder pigs purchased once a year and fattened for another four months until slaughter for meat and in a separate one right behind it there will be two goats together with broiler chickens for meat production. The pigs should stay 10 days in a paddock and then move one paddock forward, after you of course harvest the ready crop there. Then you should move the goats and broilers one step forward into the old pig paddock. This will allow the chickens to sanitize it by scratching and dispersing the pig manure and also the goat manure afterwards, eating larvae and other bugs in the process. Both paddocks will be enclosed by use of electric fencing. Even though if you're in the mood and you don't mind the labor and cost of more permanent enclosures, the ultimate in durability probably being a reinforced concrete wall 2 meters high and 1 meter into the ground, then I suppose you can do this, since you'll only do it once and will last next to forever. This method will ensure that in a single paddock, once the animals have gotten through, they will not come back for another 100 days, which is 10 days times 10 empty paddocks ahead. 100 days are enough to grow any of the crops mentioned above. But, you may say, 4 times 100 days equals 400 days, which is more than the year has. Well, you should obviously cheat a bit with how fast you move them depending on how fast the previous crops are ready. I mean, turnips take 60 days tops. No need to wait 100 to bring the animals back. So you can move them a bit faster once you're at that stage. It will also ensure that your paddock is completely clear of vegetation before planting and that it is enriched with a lot of nutrients every time, right before planting your new crop. The outer fence. The fence at the edge of your property can be used for growing grape vines, same as the fence around the homestead zone in fact. The total fencing length of such a setup will be 680 meters, which equals an awful lot of grapes. 